Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse. Today I'm going to compare the Casio Prism to the TI-84 Color Edition on how to graph a piecewise function. So the first thing we need to do for both is get into our, our y equals where we can enter the piecewise function. So in a Casio graphing calculator, the prism that we're using right here, that's number five. So I'm going to choose number five and that brings me to the y equals. In the TI-84, I simply hit the y equal button up here at the top. So we're in the same menu. Uh, one thing, here is my piecewise function that we are going to be graphing on both calculators. So I wanted to make sure when I hit graph or draw on either calculator that the piecewise function would actually show up. So I've preset the window ahead of time to one that I know is going to work. So just to show you that they are the same windows, if we look at the Shift F3 for Casio gets you to the window and the window button up here for the TI gets you to the window. So you'll notice we have the same window for both and this, this means that they'll both be able to show up. So let's go back to our Y equals screen. So let's look at the Casio first. So I'm going to pull my piecewise function up again. I have three conditions here for my piecewise function. So on the Casio graphing calculator, I'm going to enter those three into Y1, Y2, Y3. And on the Casio, you enter the condition right in with the actual uh, function. So let's look at each one separately. So the first one, 2x plus 7, I'm in Y equals. I'm going to enter 2x plus 7. And now I want to enter the conditional on the same uh, Y1 line. So I'm going to separate it with a comma. So this separates the function from the condition. So the condition is going to get isolated by using some brackets, which are here at the plus and the minus sign in yellow, which means I need to hit shift then plus to open my bracket. Now let's look at the condition. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 2. So I have nothing that x is greater than, which would be my first number if I had it. So since there isn't anything, I'm not going to enter a number and I'm going to enter a comma, which separates the x is greater than from the x is less than. And now I'm going to enter the value that x is less than. So that would be a negative 2. So this is how I enter my condition. So x is not greater than anything and it is less than negative 2. So now I'm going to close my bracket. Again, that's the minus sign, so I need the shift minus sign. I've closed my bracket, and I'm going to hit execute to enter. So here is my first condition for my piecewise function. Let's go to the second one. f of x equals 3, so I'm going to enter 3. There's my function, and then I'm going to separate it from its condition, and the condition here is x is between, so it's greater than a negative 2 and less than or equal to a 2. So I'm going to enter that condition. Again, I have to open my bracket, so shift plus. This time I do have something that x is greater than. I'm going to enter that value here, so negative 2. I have a comma to separate it. x is less than positive 2 and we're going to enter positive 2. So we have our two conditions. x is between negative 2 and 2. That's what this means. And we're going to close the bracket and hit execute to enter that function in its condition. And now let's go to the last one. We have x plus 1. So let's enter that function. Um, we've got x plus 1, comma again to separate it from the condition. Let's open the condition by shift plus, and this time we have a greater, x is greater than, so we're going to enter that first, comma, let's enter our x is less than, well, we don't have one in this third one, so we're not going to put any number, and we're simply going to close our condition and hit execute to enter. So I have entered the three parts of the piecewise function, and I'm ready to actually graph it. So that is draw, which you'll see is under F6. So when I hit F6, there is the graph of my piecewise function. So that's how you do it on the Casio Prism. It's a little different on the TI-84, so let's move our piecewise over and have a look at our um, TI-84. So we start off the same. We do have to enter the function and the condition, but they're entered differently on the, FI, um, the TI-84 Color Edition. Um, so to do that, I need to actually have a numerator denominator. So you enter the function as the numerator and the condition as the um, the what am I saying? The condition as the denominator. So I need to get a numerator denominator in there. And to do that, I need to do alpha y equals. And you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to hit the alpha button 
and the y equals button and now I have some choices so I want this first one number one numerator denominator so since it's already on one I'm just going to hit enter that puts a fraction basically up here my y equals so I'm going to enter the function up here very much like I would in the Casio so 2x plus 7 and then I'm going to have to arrow down till I get into the numerator and I need to get my x in there so I'm now entering the condition x is less than or equal to a negative 2 so x is easy to enter but now I kind of need that less than or equal to and where is that found on the TI-85 that is found in um, the, the test right here so math test so I need to hit second math and now I see my less than or equal to so we're looking at less than or equal to so that's let's just hit six to hit number six and that puts a less than or equal to in here and now I can enter my negative two so function on the numerator condition as the denominator I hit enter and I've set that so we've got the first one in so let's get the second one in we have to go through the same process so I need to get that fraction in again so let's remind that's an alpha y equals number one to get numerator denominator and the top number is going to be my function so three I'm gonna arrow down till I get to this uh, denominator section this is where I'm gonna enter the conditional in and again I'm gonna enter it I can't enter it as I see it now I have to actually use an end so I kind of have to use parentheses now so let's enter the first one which is negative 2 is less than X so we're gonna do parentheses negative 2 and I need the less than symbol which remember again is under this test so I got to do second math and I want less than so that's a 5 and now I'm gonna put X in there and that's our first condition so I'm going to close my parentheses and now I need to get the word end in there so I'm going to hit second math again and I need logic so I'm gonna to have to arrow over to logic and I need this word end so I'm gonna push one that gets the word end in there and now I need a parentheses for this second part of that condition X is less than or equal to two so again we're going to open parentheses and we enter our X and now I need the less than or equal to so we have to do um, second test again so second math and I want less than or equal to which is six and I have to put in my number which is a positive two and close my parentheses and now we are done with the second part of the piecewise function and now we're at this third piece which again we're going to go through the same process so I need to first get the numerator denominator so let's do uh, alpha y equals again number one for my numerator denominator numerator I'm going to enter the function so x plus one and then I'm going to arrow down and I need to enter the condition this time we only have the one x is greater than two so x and remember to get that symbol greater than I'm going to have to go under test here so second math and greater than is three so we're going to enter three and now we're going to enter our number two and then hit enter to set it and there now I have all three conditions of the piecewise function they look a little different than um, we had them on the Casio and now we're ready to actually graph so we're going to hit graph and you'll see same graph um, you don't see the numbers as you do on the Casio but same graph um, there you go so the process is a little more convoluted in the TI-84 you can get the same graph but um, if we just kind of exit out and go back to y equals you'll see this is all done very quickly on the Casio you, you enter the function and then use brackets and numbers and commas to kind of identify the conditions whereas on the TI-84 you have to go through uh, the process of getting a, numer a numerator denominator fraction and then using your logic and your test so there's a lot more steps involved and um, it doesn't look 
quite the same either, but you do end up with similar graphs. That's it.